Hey everybody, welcome back to the VW Beetle Rebuild Series. In the last episode, I took care of the shocks and I decided to put the sway bar on hold. And so today, my plan is to take care of the shift rod and bushing and the heater control cables and the emergency brake. And I believe that's it. I may also take a look at the clutch assembly. I don't know if I have that on here. The throwout bearing? I need to put that on my list. But um, that's what I plan on trying to do today. So let's see how far I get. For those of you that are following along and you already watched my pedal cluster video, you were... Um, I had put a note in there that I forgot something and I'm sure some of you have guessed it. I have not posted that video yet, but um, what I missed was I forgot to install my uh, brake spring. So that's why the brake does that and instead of, you know, standing in its normal position where it belongs. So like this old saying goes, I love my job so much I get to do it twice. I gotta take that whole thing apart, disassemble the whole deal because this spring is one of the first things you're supposed to install. I'm gonna save that for a different day though. Today's goal is taking care <clears throat> of this right here, which is the shift rod. I need to clean that up. And then I already put the spring on the bushing, so this is the shift rod bushing. That needs to be installed inside the tunnel and I also have a new um, coupler that attaches to the shift rod to the transmission so um, that's what I'm going to start with and then if things go well um, well I also have my shifter I'm not sure I have my uh, pin that holds the shifter inside the shift rod so I'll have to track that down um, it might be in this mess here this mess that needs to be cleaned up. This looks like old shifter parts here. I did a pretty good job at labeling most of my bags, but some bags I did not label. And those are the bags that I struggle with at times. If I get done with that in enough time, <clears throat> I will move on to my heater controls and my emergency brake, because that's all stuff that takes place in the tunnel. So this would be the complete tunnel work so inside this hole right here, this is where all the shifter uh, parts go. Back here is where the uh, heater cables and levers and the emergency brake. This is, these are the emergency brake cables right here. The emergency brake lever attaches here. And back here is where the shift lever attaches to the transmission. I'm going to start by cleaning up this shift rod just so it'll make it a little bit easier to push through the bushing um, because that has to be done through the front of the, uh, the, the bug here. And of course I have the ever-present jank lowering kit attached which actually kind of gets right in the way of what I'm trying to do. And I don't remember if I pulled this shift rod out before or after I had the front beam off. So we're going to find out if uh, how hard this is going to be. We will start here at the at the parts washer. I don't know if I've ever really shown you this on camera before, but it's just a cheap Harbor Freight parts washer. And I actually filled it with diesel fuel because it's a pretty good solvent. I guess the only downside to diesel fuel is it stinks if you get it on your hands. And it eats away the paint on the inside of the the uh, parts washer. And I didn't know that until it actually had already happened. So let me take my... I've got some shifter parts here. This is the shifter spring. Here's that old coupler. I don't think I'm going to use that. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like we got construction screws and an expansion sleeve. This was uh, 
I don't know. You know how it goes with previous owners. All right. <clears throat> there is the shift plate. I've got a screw and a washer. A couple washers. And I think this is the set screw that tightens down the shift uh, rod to the shifter. So we will find out here in a second. On um, these other screws, I just figured it out. These are what secure the shift plate onto the tunnel. Everything is just loaded up with grease, which is better than being dry, I guess, because at least it's not been worn out. All right, so I just get some diesel fuel in a rag here, and I'm just going to clean off this shift rod. And as you can see, the uh, diesel fuel does a really good job just cutting through all that caked on old grease. I mean, I'd even have to wire wheel this after I'm done cleaning it here. Okay, I think I'll call this clean enough. I am going to pass it um, across the wire wheel very gently just because um, there's just some chowdered up spots, there's some rust, a little bit of rust, and then some spots where it was grabbed with the channel locks to pull it out. And I have to, in order to install this, I have to pass it through the bushing, all the way down the length of the rod. And I don't want to tear up the inside of the bushing with the rod. So I'm going to dry this off, and then I'm going to uh, hit it with the wire wheel. I don't think I'm going to record that. And then once uh, I'm done with that, we'll uh, get to the installation. All right, the shift rod is all cleaned up. I did a test fit already. I will be able to reach the hanger uh, without having to take out this thing here, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I need to just lube up this guy. I need to insert the bushing. I'll just try to show you. Those of you that know already know, but... Back in here, grab a flashlight, see if we can't get it. Back inside the tunnel there, you see that hole? So that's where the bushing is going to go. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, insert that bushing right now. Maybe I'll set you up so you can see my struggle. Okay. See it there. This is the bushing with the spring on it. Nice click. For some whatever reason, they say rotate the uh, open end of the bushing towards the driver's side, and there it is in place. So the spring is forward and the there's a notch in the bushing that interfaces with that hole, that tab that was hanging down there and that's what clicks in. So now I'm gonna um, lube up this shift rod and try to get it inserted into that bushing. Add a little grease to the inside of the bushing, maybe help it slide a little bit better. Well, that's not good. I don't know how well you can see it, but the bushing went too far in when I pushed in the rod. I don't understand why it has to be this hard. And maybe there's an easier solution, because this one obviously isn't working. So now I have to pull the rod back out and try to get it and I think that bushing is destroyed, so I'll have to order a new one. Maybe I'll find a higher quality one or something. This one just, something doesn't seem right. Let me get this pulled out and we'll see what we can do. Well, I couldn't give up. So I did a little research and I'm pretty surprised this bushing is from Wolfsburg West, which is supposed to be the the best quality plastic bushings available. Um, but, and maybe that 
I didn't get the spring clip from Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg West, though. I got the spring clip from J-Bugs. And so it, what ended up happening is that I believe the J-Bugs clip was too tight. And so I stretched it out just a little bit. And that gave me the right amount of slack to be able to get this rod started. And so now it's in there. So now I got to get the rod pushed all the way to the back. And so that in and of itself is a challenge. <clears throat> I'm using white lithium grease um, just because it's a little bit easier to apply because I have it in a spray bottle. And so I'm going to just kind of wrestle with this now until I get the rod all the way in. Oh, that was intense. <clears throat> okay, it's time for the next step, which is to attach the shift rod to the transmission shift. I don't know. It's a coupling. So, it comes in a kit. <clears throat> I have the original, but I just don't think it's going to... Uh, work out. It's it's really old and the uh, the the rubber pieces that go in like this are just really hard and brittle. So we got this guy. <clears throat> kind of comes as a kit. What do you know? It doesn't fit. What's new? Uh, let me check here. Well, that is dressed properly, so I just need to. Guess I'm gonna need to ream this out. I can feel a lip around the casting. You know, this is um, EMPI, which is you know the cheapest stuff that's available. Uh, you notice everything I have on here, my all my bushings and and everything is red. And I didn't choose it because it was red necessarily. You generally have to choose between black or red. And when I was buying my parts, they didn't have everything in black. And so I didn't want to have some stuff in black and some stuff in red. So I chose red for everything. Um, now, obviously, some of these parts aren't even going to be seen. You know, like these torsion bar bushings that are behind the plates. But, but I mean, I wanted to get the polyurethane. And that's what uh, all of this stuff is. And, and uh, the polyurethane should be a little bit more resilient. But they do say it's a little stiffer, so we'll find out. All right, well, I'm going to go try to clean this up with a file, and then I'll be right back. All right, and yet another change of plans. I grabbed the old coupling out of the uh, wa the parts washer, and I cleaned off the, the back side here, and I saw that it has the VW logo on it. So even though this one's damaged, it looks like some for some reason somebody got it with a saw. There's saw, you know, evidence of... A saw cutting through the top of this but doesn't affect the operation of it so I'm gonna go with it mainly because I know that it will fit over this shaft perfectly and being a genuine VW part <clears throat> I'm more inclined to use it and you know I just moved the bushings from the replacement part back to this guy so let me I'm actually gonna use the original screw also and I'll have to use the new hardware uh, for the bushing side. So, like this. So that shouldn't be a problem. Let me get this tapped into place. I can. Alright, so I found a couple of burrs on the on the shaft here, transmission shaft, so I hit it with the file and uh, it seems to have been all it needed. Line that guy up, drop the screw in. Now you're supposed to run a wire through this and then wire it all around as kind of a fail safe. Um, but I don't have said wire. I 
don't know. I don't know how tight is tight. <laughs> it just keeps going. I guess it'll bottom out eventually. Oh, it's spinning. I got it. It's spinning the other one here. And let me see if I got another 11 millimeter. I guess that's as good as it gets. All right, time to get this shifter put back together. I have some questions about it, <clears throat> some observations, and I'm not sure, again, exactly why these things were done the way that they were done. Um, I'll show you guys in just a minute once I get everything lubed up pretty good here. I don't know if you can see it, there's a detent, uh, a ball detent right here on the shifter. But it doesn't interface with anything inside the, um, the cup there. All it does is it makes it tight, which might be all it's supposed to do. But I mean, what would keep you from rotating the shifter? Um, and I suppose that doesn't matter. Oops, wrong order. The manual says to grease everything where metal comes into contact with metal, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am going to lube up the inside of this guy though, since there will be metal coming into contact with metal in here. It's all covered with a rubber boot, so this grease isn't going to get too crazy. It's not going to get everywhere. I'm going <clears> to <throat> loosely tighten this down because that guide plate is it needs to be in a specific location and I have no reference so I gotta after everything's assembled it's gonna take a little bit of figuring out um, in order to get this plate in the right spot so it goes into gear easily like it'll go into gear right now I'm neutral first second well maybe that was third and fourth Here's first. Anyway, it's going to take some adjustment, obviously. I don't know why this spring is sticking out. I think that's a problem. <clears throat> Maybe I have it upside down. Alright, looking at my manual, it doesn't give me a very good diagram, but I believe the spring actually goes under that cup like that so it, it gets captured by that cup the manual says it's all supposed to come out as a single unit um, but I took it apart so I could de-rust it and paint it but this looks more correct because now that cup is resting inside the top rim of this plate and I'm assuming it'll let me shift a lot easier now now yeah, getting the rubber boot on is gonna be fun it's not so bad I'm gonna try to not stab a hole into this. All right. 
I'm gonna call that good for now. Now we get to turn our attention to the center controls here. Well, like everything else with this project, it's been so long since I've done anything with it. I got to do some remembering. I mean, obviously you got some leverage. You have to pass. I've got a plate here. So this goes here. Oh yeah, I remember now. It, it's really strange. So it, I believe this balances up here. And it's just... Okay. So let me get my main... I can put in my king pin or whatever you want to call it. The main pivot pin. Just put some lube on it. It's still a nice tight fit, so that's good. Sticker in there. So it originally came with spring, like these little circlet things, like, and I'm, I'm using proper um, spring clips or whatever they're called to hold it in place. Partly because I lost one of the little circlip things. It reminds me of the little retaining clips that they use on, in like, um, pistons inside, you know, small engines. So I'm just using proper retaining rings. Maybe they didn't exist back then, I'm not sure. Oh, and I, I see what I did wrong. I believe this guy, let's see here. There needs to be leverage. Or it needs to be anchored somehow on a lip that's right there and that's what does the whole ratcheting action so let's get that back in there see now there's the ratchet See what I'm up to here. Okay, so where did that plate go? I'll just put a little dab right here. So now I gotta feed these guys through this plate. Oops, I got the wrong nuts. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I'm glad I hung on to these. These are kind of an odd shape. They're they're like cone shaped and they fit inside these uh, holes. And the holes are got a you know countersink in them. size are these? Oh, these are actual tens. Okay. So, just a little at a time, each side, try to evenly uh, cinch them down. I just want to get this attached. Um, I'm not going to adjust it yet. 
and just want to get it so it doesn't fall off on its own. If I remember correctly, they were tightened down quite a bit. I'm sure there's some stretch. And I did not <clears throat> install new parking brakes or anything, so or new cables or anything, so these should be the same length that they were before. So many things in a beetle are just such an odd setup. I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Um, I was taking a look at my heater cables set up and I believe these, this is the two cables that control the interior vents and it is torn up. I'm going to have to order a new one. I'm not going to be able to run <clears throat> my heater cable tubes um, to their final location until I have the body on anyway, just so I make sure that they're, they're pointing in the right location because uh, those will have to be welded in. Um, so as far as the center controls are concerned, uh, I'm done. Um, lots of adjustments still need to take place. I'll have to adjust the emergency brake to make sure it actually engages when I want it to and disengages when I want it to. And then I'll have to adjust the shifter plate to make sure that it shifts easily into all gears. Um, again, for just the purposes of putting the body back on the chassis, uh, all that stuff can take place after the body's on it. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm working on right now can be done when the body's on, but I just uh, want to kind of take advantage of the accessibility that's available to me right now, now that the body's gone. So it's time to sign off for this one. Thanks everybody for sticking around with this project and following and if you have anything you'd like to share, any advice or any criticisms or anything, you can go ahead and do it down in the comment section down below. If you're enjoying this project, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click the notification button to get notified whenever new uh, videos are dropped. I try to get them out once a week. So thanks everybody for sticking around. My name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. I'll catch you next time.